Dila. Dulu, virgule déglaçon. Déglaçon. In this example, we notice that the teacher provides the students with a worksheet template to help them structure their investigation. This sheet includes headings recalling the different steps to be carried out. Each one is indicated by a frame with a title and an instruction specifying what the students should write. This structuring of the writings enables the students to become familiar with the scientific approach and constitutes a reference for following the progress of their ideas up to the conclusion they drew. It also allows the teacher and the students to look at the writings of the different groups, to analyze and compare them. On pense à marquer dans sa conclusion ce qui se passe pour les glaces continentales et la banquise. Attention, dans sa réponse, on explique bien ce qui se passe par rapport à quoi Si le niveau de l'eau est monté. The teacher also frames the work of the groups by using the board on which is written a general instruction which remains displayed during the implementation of the experimental protocols. Une fois que vous avez préparé vos bacs, qu'est-ce que vous allez faire pendant ce temps-là On va mesurer. Vous allez mesurer quoi La, le, le niveau d'eau. C'est la bouteille. Et on va attendre pour que les glaçons fondent. D'accord. Après, on va remesurer. D'accord. Here, we see an interaction between the teacher and the group of students, which takes place in two stages. The teacher first asks an open question. What are you going to do in the meantime Then, a second, more precise question linked to the answer given by the students. What are you going to measure? This way of proceeding allows the teacher to take information on the ways the students organize and understand the work in progress without directing their answers. The main purpose of the interaction here is to help the students to structure the different steps of the experimental protocol, beginning and end, and to highlight the relevant parameters to be observed and measured. It is possible to start specific work with students on their schematizations. This work will focus on comparing different diagrams proposed by the students. For example, the analysis could focus on the way to represent the water level, whether or not it is necessary to use a ruler for straight lines, and the usefulness of representing the ruler to indicate the same water level in the two containers. For this last criterion, the question could be asked as to how to avoid time-consuming representations, for example, by directly marking the level. This work of analyzing the diagrams is also an opportunity to refine the observations to obtain a good match between the representations and the experiments. For example, the students' attention could be drawn to drawings of levitating continental ice cubes, or they could be asked the following questions. In the container, is the immersed part of the ice cubes as large as the one represented on the diagram? Vous avez pu remarquer des choses Qu'est-ce qu'on peut en conclure dans la réalité Qu'est-ce que ça signifie La glace continentale, elle, elle fond et bah, il y aura beaucoup d'inondations. D'accord. The teacher stops here at a crucial stage in the scientific process. She tells the students that the conclusions drawn from their experimental protocols must be related to the phenomenon they have just modeled. Indeed, in this particular case, the students cannot experiment directly on continental ice, sea ice, and sea level. They create a model in which the brick represents the continents, the ice cubes, the continental ice and the sea ice, the container and the water, the ocean and its level. It is important to make the students realize the correspondence between the different elements of their model and the elements of the phenomenon they are trying to model. Then, It is also important to help them make the connection between the experimental findings and the original question. This can be done by explicitly asking the students the following question. We have melted ice cubes in containers, but what do our results mean about the melting of continental ice, the melting of sea ice, and the rise in sea level? What se passe happen si the level of the water increases? The inhabitants who are trouvent où? Près, de, près du littoral. Près du littoral. Finally, the teacher discusses climate change and ice melting in a few steps. First, 
Following the initial questioning, the students work on the physical phenomenon and the concepts associated with continental ice and sea ice melting. Using the concepts they have discovered, they then assess the consequences for people. In the final phase, which is not shown in the video, the students will imagine and look for solutions to limit the rise of the sea level, but they will also discuss the measure to adapt to this phenomenon. Thank you.